Darwinian, Dale, they both are jealous of the treasures that we have amassed so far. The Lokan assures the men of Rune that they are mightier than they believe in arms. However, it may not be only men that are after our gold. Hello everybody and welcome back to this Easterlings of Rune campaign. We commence where we left off last time with Karasant besieged. I firmly believe that we are about to be attacked there. We've got our Lok card in there. But we have sailed Tamruben uh, Arulad, Dragon Guard General, across the sea, or the lake really, over to Winterian Yor at the, the day... Uh, or the Dalians, they came and attacked us, which was absolutely uh, foolish of them. So we've gone over there, and uh, we're going to take that next turn. We are going to go in there with our lowly ram, with this. Um, I hope that I don't live to regret it, but we've done everything already for this turn. Apart from um, Burm and Arrakis, now actually I think that it's fairly safe. We're going to put in the Master Mason's Hall, and that is going to start becoming a real good hub for us in the future for the Lokan and his trade ideals. And I think, yeah, we're still putting up towers over there with Arslan. All right, let's go forwards. And there we go. It's like I can see the future. I'm so, so good at that. But we have been attacked by Captain Liff. And uh, there are a lot of them. Admittedly, there are lots of vineyard levies, but they do have thorn bladesmen, which are more than a match for our Daritai warriors. And then they've got thorn guard. Um, and they've got a lot of bowmen, but this is a large town if I do... Uh, well, I, I believe it is. So how many units of infantry, like melee infantry? We've got one, two, three, four, five-ish... Oh, that's it. Uh, we have not got a lot to defend against all of that. And our cavalry might... Well, Candish Hunters are decent in melee as well. So, um, hopefully he doesn't die. We shall all find a way to an honourable... But this should be quite a fruity little battle. So, we've got crossbows here. Now, the reason I've put them here is because they've got the siege tower here. And uh, they're going to end up pop it up here so we put our damaged unit here reason being that uh, then when they pop off off the siege tower then they'll like fight here and we might get beaten back but the crossbows can actually fire directly at them and that should give them a lot of value these guys also can fire at whatever the hell they like because candish hunters they are reasonably good in melee four and eight and up on the walls here they should be able to beat eight and ten and, and then they can still fire their bows afterwards. So they've come up here. Whilst over here, um, we haven't quite got enough for me to do what I want to do. And um, have an extra unit right there. So, unfortunately, what we're going to have to do is... Um, well, we've got our archers here. Because I want to then place them here to then shoot at the enemy as they um, kind of come into this location here. Um, so we've got like our trash here. I can't put them there because I do not trust these to actually hold the line. Um, I feel like they might run away pretty quickly. So that's that's that. But uh, once these guys are finished with their bows, we will send them into melee. Right, actually fire at the Dawn Guard. How are these arcs? Not great. But they're only three missile attack anyway. So having like these guys with the two... Like, their accuracy won't really matter because um, they're just going to be hopefully firing into that. But if they do, like, march in this direction, we will just send one of them into melee because, you know, like, they're not going to do loads of damage, I suppose. Like, do be off guard mode because I want to make sure that some of you do survive. But as you can see, they are doing... I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but I think they are doing reasonably well. Um, but you're going to hold there. I think we can even send... Let's send our cavalry out. We can get some shots off. Um, particularly now that they're going into the town. So that's going to be rather satisfying. Um, well, who are you firing at? I mean, these guys are going to have so much ammunition. But in they come. In they come. Maybe just fire over there for now. We need to watch this with utmost trepidation. Uh, perhaps we should move a bit 
closer because we don't want them to we do want to direct i mean they're gonna come in this direction no doubt but um i mean you say that right you come on over here because they might if they start coming up, i mean the 20 of them don't really care about them um i think they're just forming up okay this is fine right you guys don't be on defensive anymore and you men, crossbows, I think you're almost okay to start firing in over here. These 42 are not doing well. And they have pushed in. Ah, uh, it's not good. It's not good. Right. Commence firing at the Thorn Riders. I don't want Lokan Rukar to die, as we've seen what has happened to our other generals. Where they've just, you know, um, kind of been run over. Um... But you men, right, stop firing. And actually, if you can, just come right there. I'm going to start using you, perhaps in melee, uh, if required. And you, just fire at whatever you like. And how's it looking? Right, I think now we haven't got too many in the way. That, oh, we've only got seven men there. I don't think our crossbows are going to get any value at all. But if we can just get even one really good volley... No, shoot right here. Shoot at these guys right here. Right, that's it. They've all gone. They might... Yeah, that's not quite how I wanted it to go down. Not quite. And those guys aren't even coming off the wall. Drat. Right, fire into that. Into that. Are we going to get... I think we did just fire at them. Right, let's get another volley. Oh, those guys are firing as well. Right, come on. This needs to be good. Else you're just going to be fodder. Come on. That was... Non-existent. Absolute pile of trash. Well, they're just going to be there. <laughs> um, wait, what is happening here? Oh, these Candish Hunters have not prevailed. I think because they've got that unit of Dorwin Rim infantry over here as well. Right, you come on over here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I mean, they only had a, they only have a, um, a captain anyway. So, um, oh, you're being attacked. Oh well, fight against them then, and you just keep firing into that. Um, do we send these guys into melee? No, just fire directly at them until you can no longer do so. And Rukar, hopefully, is going to do the business. What? is the other unit of Daratai Warriors. Right, just go in there. Attack. They're wavering. I don't want to send Rukar in because he might then uh, live to pay for that. Right, you're just going to go and pick up all these stray units. Oh, and they're leaving the crossbows alone. Well, that's foolish. Right, actually, crossbows. Shoot at the uh, Thorn Guard over there. The whatever the, the hell is there. Just shoot, shoot them all. Right, come on. Be good, be good. This is, a, this is a tense moment. Tense moment. Oh, well, you're firing. You're not really firing at anyone. This isn't going quite as planned. But, um... It doesn't really matter. They're all ro running. Right, fight them. Thorn Guard next. And Cavalry will just pick all these fools off. Oh, they're actually getting killed, I think, by... Who, exactly? Just go after the... No! Don't go into the vineyard levies. Just go and get them. Right. Um, we're having some severe pathfinding issues here. And I don't want them... I don't want to see them get killed by... Our own... Our own missiles, really. But... Um, I think... I think that's that. Oh, they it's just a mass route. Right, let's just use Serpent Elixir to solidify that. It is just that one unit of vineyard levies that will no doubt do loads of damage to our cavalry if we let them. So, we're just going to go and chase them off. There we go. And 89% of them have perished. Let's just get to 90. I think that's a good number. Actually, I can't be bothered. I think that's probably okay. I'm going to go for that. Heroic victory. Lokan Ruka, the conqueror and capturer of Karasant, has once again prevailed. He didn't actually kill that many himself. 193 Candish Hunters, though. 159 Crossbowmen. They did kill a lot. Oh, okay. We did, of course, execute all of those 
Well, wine-loving merchants now, it's understandable that they would like to come and take Karasant back. But with this continued aggression, the Lokan, you know, he feels like perhaps we need to go and take out their final great stronghold over here in their capital of, uh, their new capital of Sant and Nui. They do still have a castle over there, but, uh, that is on a hill far away. Dolgul do like us very much. Can't see why, really, but, um, loads of buildings have been built and including um a port here so let's have a look how much money this is currently making us it's making about 176 gold coins which isn't too bad it's not too good but we have to remember that we don't have ports everywhere so that is probably not going to be the primary uh trading port or the only one e even like we're gonna have two per settlement now we are wanting to prioritize trade in these regions. Um, but how much would a trading post even give you? Yeah, it's not going to give you loads. And I think, how much money are we making? We're making a lot of money currently. So perhaps adding in the roads would be a good starting point. Because that would just allow for this movement to be a bit quicker. Yes, we do have boats. But we don't have too many of them. And... Um, uh, therefore, I don't even know where they are. Oh, they're there. Um, yeah, we might need them just to t making sure that there are no naval incursions from the Dalians coming from the north on the Kelduin. So, um, solid money. But um, then Mataram, I think, also got the grain exchange. It did. And it's making so much money. If we were to put in a trading post here. Oh, yeah, that's going to make us loads. But equally so is the mining network. Um, it costs a lot more, but once we've got it, we've got it, and so we're getting it. I think that's okay. Um, yes, and what else was there? Strundost also got um, the stables. Now, can we get them? No, not for nine turns. That's basically the barracks event. In my experience, the barracks event nearly always occurs on the 61st turn, which gives us ten turns. Now, if you just have a look here, that's three, that's four... And then you can also get the Warlord's Hall. So we can get all of these three buildings before the barracks event hits. And then you can start getting the better buildings. And that will actually also line up very well with when this place really becomes like our main trading hub. Because that is going to be better than Mistrand in the long run with it being a castle. The only downside is that I think the front is going to move quite far away from it but nonetheless it'll be useful because it's by the sea so what should we get first well i'm of a mind just to get the ballast maker immediately because from my gondor campaign i've realized like how badly you need siege equipment um to successfully take towns in a timely manner now karasan did we literally just okay we did get the car um the dark century i couldn't quite remember what we got there let's get the basin tool as well like yes we've kind of spent all of our money there but we what should does... do we have a mission oh to acquire villaric and villaric is over here now before we move on any further i did just want to add about the merchants I that what i'm gonna do well you can stay there for a bit because your Very good. trading potential is Very awful and you'll probably get acquired trade. but what I we can do you. is like i don't want to just move them over to the shire because that's kind of a bit cheesy um well it's cheating isn't it but um i don't necessarily agree with the fact that that is like there's one like a merchant if he's hurrying to a place perhaps he can move twice as fast or something like that um and even so i think 10 turns is a solid amount of time for him to just move over there so after 10 turns perhaps he he or after five turns perhaps he finds a horse and then makes it there a lot quicker so Around the 60th turn, we'll uh, pop him over there. Now, our diplomat, which is this guy, our diplomat is on his way to have a word with the Gondorians. The Lokan is slightly displeased by the fact that Mordor is encroaching on its lands and perhaps going to harm our bottom line by taking away some of these valuable trade resources. And now that we're acquiring all of this wine from the Dorwin Rim, Who's going to buy this? Now, the Dalians, they would have maybe bought it. But they have now foolishly gone to war with us. The Wood Elves, they are secluded and far from our thoughts. And 
they are equally allied to the Dalians, so they're a bit unfriendly. Now, who else likes wine? Well, the Gondorians do. Perhaps we could manufacture some kind of alliance with them and uh, help each other, you know, seize some of this land in between and um, oust Mordor from our affairs. Um, basically, what I'm saying there is we're going to try and ally with Gondor and uh, attack Mordor. Now, some of you may think you that would be a foolish idea here. and it's too late, but we we've got cavalry and like much better cavalry also than Gondor, um, meaning that this tactic could actually work with Rune, where you just get loads and loads of cavalry. Um, and yeah, anyway, I mean, our infantry isn't too bad. This is what we've got here in Karasant. Oh, wait, but before we get carried away, let's take Tamruban for a spin. And uh, they've got no garrison, which is a pleasant, pleasant sight. But they've got Northman Militia 5 and 3, effective against armor. They're just woodsmen, effectively. Dale Cavalry and Prince Hallward, who comes with the generic bodyguard. Oh, let's just have a look at that one more time. So they've got, they are a spear and shield unit when they're not using their bows. 9 and 21, which is pretty... Is pretty poor to be honest. I mean, it's Gondor spearman level, but their missile attack is seven. They use black arrows, which means that they are armor piercing and they fire at the same rate as you know archers do, which makes them a lot better than crossbows. And they've even got uh, greater range, but it's a keep, which I think it means that it's quite easy to capture. We dance with death. And it is as I thought. It's reasonably easy to get at as long as they don't destroy our ram. Um, that would be awful. But these kinds of towers, they're not too good. We've just gone in with our Balchoth spearmen. They've got big shields and uh, very low damage. So I don't particularly care what they do. But I think they're going to come out and fight us immediately after. Um, so here are the Royal Guardsmen looking very suave. I I do quite like the shields. The shields look quite nice. Um, I don't know if they get an upgraded look, but those are the black arrows. You see those kind of trails coming from their bows. Right, let's also go into loose or tight formation. We are already fighting. Yeah, get off the ram. Now, you're going to get screwed by them. Actually, yeah, come away. Come away from there. We've got, we, we've got the door open now. We can allow them to go in and do what they wish to do. What are they doing? See, that is the town square right there. And we've got our archers over here. Let's, uh, I mean, we could bring these guys in and just shoot at them. Obviously, we're going to take some shots here by these, these towers over here. But I don't really care about these at all, in fact. But maybe we should just send them in. I don't think this is going to Help us out, because these guys are also getting shot. So, in you go. And let's bring these guys in as well. Like, we don't care about the spears. I mean, equally, they're the first ones now to get healing. So, these are the ones that are going to come back. And if the rest of our units that are going to get killed, they're not going to get healed. So, we've got definitely enough infantry, I think. And let's send these guys in as well. Right, and in you go up against the general and as soon as you get in there as well you're going to do the same now if we can shoot like our range is just pitiful isn't it but if we can get a bit closer and shoot at these northman militia because i think they'll do some reasonable damage against us um let's try that and are we in range of those cavalry not quite yeah our range just isn't quite good enough. And I don't think we can quite get in the walls without being harassed by them. Yeah, no. Well, I'll hold off on them, but our archers are successfully firing at these Northman militia. They've only got two, two armor against our two missile attack. And, you know, I think this building here, like the actual keep itself, if you get too close, I think that does also start firing missiles. Um, similar to how towers do. It's very rare that you really fight in keeps such as this. So it's kind of one of those things that you might not really notice. Although perhaps we should just fire or throw our javelins at those Northman militias there. Right, you guys come in here. And we're going to send you against the cab. 
and then we can bring in our javelins uh, and they'll get a much better shot much better throw at these woodsmen um, because they're gonna they're gonna beat our spearmen no question about it but as I say I'm not really that bothered about them we can easily get more units um, just from what is it rhubar yeah rhubar's got a lot of availability for further units oh and there's northman militia they look like they want to they look like they want a piece. You're just going to go in there, take out those Dalian cavalry. Like so. And then, I don't know where they're going. But, uh, right. I'll bring these guys in anyway. I mean, we've got our cavalry, which actually are effective against cavalry. But, I don't think they're going to be required. They're not too good in battles like this. But uh, maybe we'll just swing the javelins all the way around here then. So come on, lads. Come on over here. Like, how are our spears doing? I mean, they're holding the line. That's fine. And, oh, this looks like it could turn out to be pretty juicy. It's going to be a big throw here. I mean, they're not amazing, but <laughs> it's just satisfying to see a lot of, like, high damage in per volley. That's why I kind of like crossbows, but... They're just, you know, they're not that useful in the beginning of the campaign. Or rather, I should say, they've got very niche um, use cases. Right, so you could stop firing now because you're not going to be doing very well. But let's get these guys right in here. And we're going to throw them right into the backs of all of that. I just realized we are running a bit low on, on infantry. So you are actually going to have to come in over here. You're going to have to come in over here and start shooting these guys in the back. But here we go. I mean, those guys have annihilated that cab. But this is what you need. Or what I need anyway. Hopefully, yeah, 46% of the enemy are down. But they are... I'm not seeing any of those Royal Guardsmen getting killed. I mean, Tam Ruben can come in and help. I mean, he's currently getting shot by some towers, but we'll, we'll send him in in a bit. These guys have got a lot more ammunition than you think they would. But once they have done, the enemy force I think... We must pray are they going to... Fight. How, many, how many volleys do they have? Is that it? No, you still got, like, one guy with one javelin. And that was it. Right, in you go. And then from the front, we'll have Tam Ruben appear. And just go and attack attack them. And we could send these guys into melee as well. But why bother when we could? Oh, don't go in there. I was kind of hoping to be able to shoot, shoot them in from behind. But I don't think that's going to work out now. Because we've kind of surrounded them completely. Um, right, well actually, javelins, you get in there. We'll make it a real mosh pit. Make it a real mosh pit. So that's uh, everything that we're working with. The Royal Guardsmen, though, they're going to be a real pain. And there is a real chance that um, our general over there might get killed. He definitely could get killed. I mean, yeah. Right, Burns we're going to have to push on through. The battle. My Lord. I, I don't want to see him castle. go down. Because if he does go down, we could potentially run away so let's kind of really push on in there <laughs> make sure that doesn't happen go on save him like we're giving up some of our archers in doing so but i think that's worth it let's bring the cavalry in just to capture the town square in they come in they come oh well we're pursuing right everyone just go and kill those royal guardsmen before tam ruben the foolish gets killed and you just go in there Keep the uh, town square capped. Um, we don't want him to actually go into melee. Because he is right there. I think we've saved him. I think we've just about saved him. I mean, the archers took a lot of damage there. But that's pretty acceptable. So, we can just uh, fast forward, really, to the end of the battle. And uh, have a look at Winterian Yard. This is going to be our northern outpost, if you like. Going to secure... The north of the Sea of Rune. The enemy's general lies dead. Foolish. Why would they attack us? Well, they did. 
and now they are paying the price. We lost about the same amount that uh, we killed. Daratai Hunters 119, and let's have a look at these uh, tribesmen. Oh, they killed 66. That was probably all with the javelins. Um, not too bad across the board. And down they go. And it is ours. And we're going to occupy him. We're going to occupy. And they're not going to like that. 65%. Oh, we're going to take some damage here then. But it is reasonable in terms of um, the um, culture. I kind of want to get a meeting hall. But actually, we don't have anyone that... Oh, they would be free. Well, let's just get that anyway. Because Tam Rubin is not... He's, he's a custom general. So he's not going to be... Useful in that regard. Now, I think Gazar Barak. Oh, if we just follow the road, it goes over here, doesn't it? I thought it was, like, over there. Oh, it is there. Right, yeah, there's Talathang, and that is currently a village. But then we also border Erland's Ferry, which is, like, there. And I think it's Condavan. So they could come from either over here. Well, they're going to come... Well, if we pop the spy right there, then we can see... Stopping here. Where they're coming from and if they're coming. And obviously, we've got good sight range up the river there, too. Um, but Kargi, whilst he's uh, building some towers, I think he's on the way to Rubar. Um, and then we're going to use him. Oh, and we've got some units to retrade over here, too. So these are all going to be piled on in to the meat grinder. But speaking of troops, um. We are going to require units for the Lokan's army. So let's just keep putting them into Strendost. And I fear that perhaps, actually, our factionaire over here in Marland, he's just going to have to wait it out. I don't think he's in any danger there. If you look over there at Carverad, then there's, like, no one there. Um, unless they come from Santanwi, which they could... Well, let's just use the spy. Have a look here. Are there any armies? No, it's just Mordor. Mordor is just running rampant. Let's go and have a look over there. And, um, yeah, once we've got him in there, have we at least got a dark sanctuary? We do. So, uh, you know, eventually he will be able to leave there. But then we've got these units as well. Let's send them over there as well to help him out. But uh, everyone else, I think we'll send these guys north as all these two yeah we'll wait for that one unit to become ready and then they can go um to sant and we but uh yeah let's go for another end turn oh theoden's not doing too well because he did actually i think he already died so he's really not doing well oh well, we lost 49 men but at least the general survived and where the hell have they come from it's still 65 percent we're just gonna have to um park outside i think maybe tamruban is the issue is he oh look at that it's actually because of him um well you just go on there let's have a look at what they've got we've got two units of dalesmen and some cavalry well we've got I think we could probably deal with that with just this. Dalesman, yeah, you're going to beat the Dalesman. Cavalry beats their cavalry. Yeah, let's just go with this. And we will smite this foe. So our cavalry against Dale's cavalry. They've got 59. We've got 68. We should absolutely demolish them. Right, you start firing at them. And they're going to come towards us. And once we've demolished this cavalry, which we already are, by the way. Look at that. 30. In the 30s already. I can't even... Where even are they? There's 27 of them now. We're effective against armor. And, you know, got a bonus against cavalry. So, like, there's no way that they're ever going to... Uh, they're just getting down so, so quickly. Right. Tamruban. Up against that one. You up against that one, and then you're going to go around the outside and shoot them in the back. Now, they obviously heavily outnumber us, um, but it shouldn't really matter because the cavalry have already annihilated their cavalry, and I think that might be their... No, it's not their captain. Okay, well, that does give us now the opportunity to just come over here and charge them in the rear. And... 
they're likely to run away. Well, they probably won't run away immediately because they're eager. Although they're now they're steady. But a really solid, thunderous charge there. Taking down, well, only about 50. Actually, I don't know quite how many of there were because I wasn't really watching. But <laughs> I think I think that's probably a fairly accurate. We don't even need... We don't necessarily even need the archers. But um, let's shoot them. Shoot them from behind. They're not actually routing. They're not. But uh, right. Shoot them. And we'll charge these ones in the back. Tamruban is definitely hurting. He's definitely hurting. Let's hope he, he doesn't die. Oh, there we go. It just required one more charge, and that was that. Excellent. Excellent. And Tamruban has survived. There's only eight men in his battalion, but he has survived. We can let the others run. We've killed enough of them. Let's have a look at this then. Tamruban. Yeah, they didn't. That one did not do as well. Was he? Perhaps he was... He might have been on guard mode or something. I don't know, but cavalry, though. So good. And execute them. And that is them de dealt with, rather. Oh, and the one ring has been located. Um, if you want to acquire the ring. Well, I kind of do, but... Like, where? It's usually... It'll be in a good hideout somewhere. Um, but I can't see it popping up. I don't know where it is. And... Uh, yeah. There's... Right, well, we've obviously, we're aware of that. But wasn't there like a uh, a thing there that you could zoom in on the location? I don't think there was. That's why I clicked off it. Anyway, uh, Enmahath got to the Master Mason's Hall. And which one's this one? Oh, this is the one in the middle. Um, This would be good to... Well, the mines are good, but I think... Yeah, roads. Oh, yeah. Roads make a ridiculous amount for the Easterlings, don't they? And then, over here, Rubar. I mean, let's have a look how much roads make for you. Well, not... I mean, it's doubling our money, but just the amount of money is not that good. Get a port. Get a port, and then you can start trading with all our broskies over here. Right, what is the situation? It's 70%. That's actually fine. But, if you'd like to just go into that fort... I was hoping maybe for some sight range from that. Well, a bit more, anyway. Let's just send the fleet over here, because I don't want to get surprised like that again. Um, it doesn't look like there's anyone there yet. So, now we can see... We've got really good sight range there. I mean, Talathang is undefended, but currently we kind of want to stick to the Sea of Rune. I mean, uh, you know, that is this is like where our primary concerns are for the clan. So, we have no need to go out beyond our self-imposed borders just yet. But, um, yeah, as I was saying before, the Lok Khan can't stay over here in Karasant. If he does leave, that's fine. Okay. And then we shall take all of the infantry. And I think we'll just leave the Daritai hunters. Um, because they're not multi-functional in the same way that um, the Candish units are. So we'll go out with that. We do have to be a bit wary of that army there. Let's just go into that little shrubbery and then we'll march out. Do we have any more cavalry? I know they're all over here, aren't they? Right, well, all of you, you're coming over here. I wish we had those ships now. But they're all the way over there, so they're not going to be yeah, they won't make it. So, we'll use these guys to replenish his force. And in the meantime, if they do come over here trying to retake Karasant again, he may successfully ambush them. But after just uh, doing a quick bit of retraining, um, let's retrain those guys. Oh, right. There's only... I thought there was 45 of them, but no, there's 145. Is there anything good to get here? Not massively so right now we don't need any of them next turn perhaps but for now let's move forwards ay 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 this is not this is not good um but we'll get on to that in just a moment we're going to take this guy we need uh, more generals oh why is he all the way over there well i suppose i can use him to build some watchtowers 
Oh no, we'll use Khan Margos then, because he's got greater movement range. So um, we'll pop one over here. As you can see, Mordor owns all of this. Are you kidding me, Mordor? There's Lagarth. Like, what units do they even have? Yeah, it's just trash. Like, our cavalry would smash them, and Gothmog's there, but Dorwinian holds burnt lands, which is very amusing. Um, presumably, then Mordor holds um, the unit uh, or the settlement over there, which I think is Dorthalo as well. Um, so, we've got that extra general. That's kind of useful, but not really. Um, Northern Dunedain, Eredluin, and as you can see there, Erebor have attacked us. This is most unappealing to the Lok Khan, who just wants to trade. But I kind of wish I'd retrained those Dragon Guard now. Was it not available? Oh, I couldn't have done that. Right, what do they have in there? Oh, they've got Axe Guard of Erebor. That's really bad. They are an absurdly powerful unit. Well, not absurdly. I think they've been nerfed. They used to have like 28 defense or something. But um, they're an axe throwing unit. Actually, this isn't so bad. They're clearly damaged. And they've got archers, which... Yeah, they're good. But they're not going to get much use of their archery in here. I am... I don't know if we can win that. If we had more of these Dragon Guard, perhaps then we could. However, something we do have is a general in Kargi. And Kargi is going to be very useful in defeating... I mean, I'd be interested to see if he would be able to defeat a unit of Axe Guard. Of... No, he wouldn't be able to. There's too many of them. Um, Tamrub... Oh, there's a... Dayla coming with a massive army. And all of a sudden... I, uh, I was almost thinking, like, we're going to have to attack Rune to make... Oh, not... <laughs> we're going to have to attack Mordor to make this campaign uh, seem more interesting. Because we are absolutely steamrolling over everyone. But, um, actually, no, we're, we're welcoming all challengers here. Right, well, if we just attack you, are you going to give battle? You are. I think what we could even do is just bring in our other two units... Of archers from Karasant. Bring them on in. And kill them like so. I did already send out our horse archers. And as you can see by the trail of bodies. They didn't actually get them to move forward. So we had to move forward. And... Yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of good. That's kind of good. We've got our crossbows here right at the front. And we've got our archers behind and taking out their thorn guard is probably our best bet because uh yeah this isn't ideal i think you're gonna have to go in over there and then this unit of warriors they're gonna have to deal with all of these melee units over here but rukar should be okay going up against uh, those bladesmen and then the idea being that the crossbows can kind of get a few more shots in before it all goes to pot and then our cavalry might just be able to harass their bows to the point where they have very little effect. So that is the plan. Rukar, as long as he doesn't get killed, that'll be good. Actually, just go over there now. Go, go, go. Oh, we've got another unit over here. Oh, that's good. Right. Well, in that case, Tharatai warriors, you go over there. And clansmen, you're going to have to go and help out the Lokan, who's having... A bit of a spot of bother there. In fact, go into that gap there, because that's where he's going to be. So all of you fire into there. Crossbows go over there, and you're going to fire into the backs of those Thorn Bladesmen. And you just actually fire at the Thorn Guard. Fire at them. That's a good target. And in you go. And where is... Oh, thank the Lord. That is not our general. No, he's there. Okay, that's fine. It's going... It's pretty swimmingly at this point. Pretty good, pretty good. There's all our boys, our boyos. And usually I use this pretty late, so let's just use it now. It'll give us a bit of a bonus, and it might cause some... In oh, there, there. Oh, they're going to come and attack these crossbows, no doubt. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, dear. Right, well, what we can do is just shoot at them. Shoot at the bladesmen. And then you do the same. Only half the enemy force remains. 
We must pray they lose their and horse archers as well. Just fire at Thorn Bladesman. Because I think this is going pretty well. The Thorn God are massively outnumbered. And yep, they're routing there. Looks like the Serpent Elixir has done its job. Right, and then you go and pick them all off. And you guys get into a line. Whilst you just continue shooting into all of that. Actually, Rukar, just go in there. And like harry those bowmen. So they don't fire at us. And then we just go in there. And attack the bowmen. Or the blademen, sorry. This is, this is very, very routine. It's quite... It's quite nice, actually. It's going really, really well. And there we go. 88% down. We don't need to carry any further. And, yeah, the low Khan dealing 152 deaths. <laughs> we didn't really deal them, but killing blows, shall we say. Crossbows only got 81, though, and 102 to the Darutai Warriors. Execute these fools. <laughs> Goodbye. And then uh, we're just going to put those two man. units back in there. Noble one. Keep them happy. And um, uh, we don't even need to, like, yes. I'm not even going to bother we fighting that. And we're just going to bring out, I mean, we might just leave How those two I units serve? of archers in there. Others. Give the Lokan that. That's pretty Great decent. Games. I'm happy with that. And... Should he come up against yes, anything significant? I, I'm confident in him, you know, doing okay. How many more spies do we have? We've got this guy over here. And we've got him over there. I think we're going to need another spy. Who, who can actually recruit spies? Oh, we can't get them there. I think it is just Enmahath then that can get them. Um, oh, he can't. Oh, no, he can. Wait, was I looking at the wrong thing? No, there's definitely... Never mind. I'll just get one over here. Karasant. That's kind of where I want them. I want to have a look at all of this. Enemy army routes recruitment reports. See, look at all that retraining. Three units just got retrained in Ruba. Had that not occurred, we'd be in a much worse place. But Mistran got the Mason's Guildhouse. Right. This, then, we're going to be able to start really pumping out a lot of buildings. Naburka is getting 713... Like, we're going to be able to... This is going to, like, finance our uh, post-barracks event uh, unit armies. Or post-barracks armies. What what am I even saying? I don't even know. Um, But we can't actually... I'm not going to bother getting a leather worker here. Because um, I think we're going to be doing a majority of stuff in Strendos. Less than got communal farming as well. And if we could just... Ooh, I'm really tempted just to get the Mason's Guildhouse here. And I think I will, because... Again, when stats build, it'll make everything after that faster. We can, like, react quicker uh, by doing all that stuff. But here, we want this place to grow. So, get to communal farming. Um, because being a town on its own isn't all that useful. Karasant got that. Good. And also grow, because that is pitiful. But we can do two birds with one stone. Get the dark shrine. And get some population growth that way. And then finally, Winterin Yaur. Uh, get the meeting hall. We get that, and then we can actually recruit more units. We'll get another recruitment slot. And then after that, we could get the armory. I'm kind of tempted to get that now. Like, how many turns? How many turns are they going to be? They're going to be one. They're going to be three turns. So getting the armory won't help us, because um, that will be one turn too few. Um, Tam Ruben, can you go in there yet? You can. Excellent. Well, in that case, you guys just come back in here. And we're going to have to ferry them out. We're going to have to ferry them, or ferry units in, rather. But I think these guys... We'll walk these up the coast for now. We'll walk them up the coast for now. Um, and then, if we need to, we can locate... The Lokan over there at a pinch. Like, we've got, like, three turns to go. So, Mistrand, if you can get any units, that would be really good. Right, yeah, get get one of them. Like, some of them is okay. Get the Dragon Riders, get the Dragon Guard, and them. I mean, that's going to be three turns before we're even ready to go out. I mean, that's just that's just how long it's going to take. If we can get some units over here. I don't want too many of those crossbows. They're just not... 
as useful. We'll get those two. And Thrindos, sadly, still not able to get anything. What about Elgar? We can get Klansmen. Just get Klansmen to beef out the line. And, yeah. I, forgot, I kind of forgot about Arslan. We must. So, allowing him you just to... Because I... He was, here. like, walking up as this road. Will. But then he would have missed on that watchtower. And being able just here. to have sight range over we the must. road, I think, is probably the, the more, more the important journey. thing. We don't necessarily need to see, see all of this. So, here. um... And then we'll need a watchtower over here. But I'll get another one just right Rest there. And dawn. then... The sun sets uh, on today's journey. Yeah, I think we're okay over here. So maybe Arslan is to go north. He'll be really good against dwarves. Because they've got a lot I'm of armor. And the they're very slow. Right, but I think then we can end the turn. Oh dear, but we have been attacked then by Captain Fallon. And then... We do have um, the reinforcements coming from the town. So that's okay. We'll be able to just plop Kargi off into the bottom right-hand corner. And he'll have access to them immediately. So the the units that we really need to watch out for are the Axe Guard of Erebor. They do throw axes. The axe throws, like Franciscan axes. We've got to get up close and personal with them. And then the Stiff Beard Archers actually will have a use here uh, in a field battle. So let's give it a go. We have been allowed to draw up our battle line. The only bad thing that you could really say about this kind of situation is that we do have a captain. And so I don't know. I think these guys should be fairly reliable. But if that captain does go down, it could cause some issues. Right. Uh, we don't have fire at, fire, fire at will activated. But these Axe Guard of Erebor need to get... Um, they just need to get crushed by our armor-piercing bros. Don't allow them to throw. I mean, they're going to get a shot off. But I'd want them to actually charge at us. And they don't. And that was foolish. So we've got our dragon guard. And, our well, our two armor-piercing units up against them. The rest of all this... This is going to be very, very tricky. I don't think the archers are going to be all that useful unless they're in melee. So if we can just set them up against something, I think that could be quite useful. But we can make some use of that. Um, as you can see, Axe Guard of Erebor down to 95. How much armor do they have? 16! I was hoping perhaps we could throw some javelins at them. But I think that those javelins would just bounce right off. Which is not good it's not good at all so let's take out we can kind of uh, surround these stone foot spears though and should be able to do decent damage to them but i think we might i think yeah he's that he's definitely getting beaten there like we're gonna throw our javelins in at dwarven laborers dwarven laborers and then we'll throw in the the uh Daratire warriors up against i don't know how we're gonna kill them they're just so good. Right. But our archers, this is actually good. It might not look like it, but I'd say it's good. Because uh, they're just holding those units up. They're not going to do loads of damage. Oh, they're, they're just getting killed. I'm getting absolutely walloped. Right, throw your javelins in at them. I was kind of hoping to use them against those archers or something. But, like, that's, that's okay, I suppose. Right, go in. Go in. Actually, go in like that. Come on, come on. And then charge in. And do not be on defensive. They're shaken. That is good. Right. You've used up all your ammunition. Now you're going to come in and... Um, well, just go into melee with the stiff bids. And that's okay. Right. Now at the Dwarven Laborers. Because they're going to come in and clobber you on the, in the face. But these guys, they've won. Which isn't all that commendable given the fact that they were only up against uh, 20 or something but if we can kill off this unit of axe guard that would be really absolutely outstanding they won't be able to get another unit of these for quite a long time because you know they're a very late game um, infantry unit that I think only come from Erebor as the only as the name the suggests, they might remains. be able to get them from, like, we the Iron Hills or something as well. Fight. But other than that, and they'll come from the very highest tier of barracks as well. So, 
So I'll struggle to get them until at least the 75th turn. And that's assuming they go purely for barracks. So those guys are going to probably lose against those Dwarven Labourers. But it doesn't really matter. Because we should be able to support them. How are we doing? 67%. And we've killed all of them. Excellent. Really good stuff. Right, actually, what else do we have here? Those dragon guards, just go after those things that are running. Oh, they're all running. Excellent. And we, because they're dwarves, by the way, usually this wouldn't be possible. But they only move at 95% movement uh, speed. So we can actually run them down. Because they've got short and stunted legs. But we've killed 90% of the enemy. And that is a clear victory. I'd say that was a clear victory. And I would have almost... Well, I wouldn't say it was a heroic victory. But if you looked at the auto-resolve meter, you would have thought, like, that probably would have gone in the favour of the dwarves. Because they've got, like, so... They're so good in auto-resolve. But if we look at the kills, Balchot Spears actually coming out with 80, 89... The tribesmen, but the Lok Rim bodyguard killing 48, and the dragon guard killing 46 up against like a really, really good unit. That is very good. A triumphant first uh, battle against uh, the men of, or the dwarves of the Erebor and the Iron Hills. I was really stumbling over my words there because I was uh, too busy. Uh, thinking about, um, well, basically, after this, I'm going to go into a Zoom call with my friends. It's the Zoom in once again, that has reopened, because, of course, over here in England, uh, we've got um, we've got a national lockdown currently, so you can't go into pubs or anything, so the only way you can really meet your friends is via um, Zoom. And so we kind of pretend we're in a pub, and uh, we drink beverages and have a jolly good time. So, Burr Emanarikis I think uh, you are going to get... We'll pop in the grain exchange. Is that... Well, it will give us access then to the caravan things. But what about the roads? I mean, that's okay. I think we should just get the roads. Just get the roads because we've got the money for it. So, and we're going to always... We're going to need them. Um, right. So, then here in Strandost, how many turns until we can actually recruit things? How... It's going to be a while before that becomes useful getting the warlords hall about seven turns you might say so get the communal no don't get the communal farming get the port get the port that would make us loads more money and because it's in a castle it also gives 0.5 percent uh, population growth which also the farm would give but woodland realm do not like us also showing that uh Trying to get trade agreements with them in the future to sell off all this wine that we're about to acquire may be very difficult. But Santa and we has very, very little in there. And I'm, yes, noble I master. thought they had My eyes much more than that. Oh, there it is. That's probably, or these are probably those ones that were around here. So, Khan Margos, yes. you may be required to Setting make a, a swift here. return. Uh, we'll know are. if they're coming for you. If they get into that range so um yeah you'll make it back just fine but the Lok Khan then I think he will be okay just to march march onwards and um that we shall do yes I don't think it he's in danger of anyone like there's Ilan in over there but they're not gonna come for him so spy come down here keep track of this captain but now that the dwarves have come there are two places they can Attackers from there, or they can come round here, because the road goes like up here. So they might be even. They might want to circle round here. We're going to need some spies over here. Um, we have zero access to spies. How may that's, I that's not very good. So we're going to have to build some to... brothels over there. <sighs> yeah, right. Well, this unit of cab, I you're going to pull out, and then. We're going to merge, and then everyone that is currently pretty much at full capacity, you're going to make your way over there. And then the next lot should be able to make it back to Winteri and Yaur if we retrain them. And indeed, this unit also. So we should be able to get a hefty garrison in there, but it's not very defensible, as we've already seen. Uh, it is only a keep. But 
you will have to join me next time for that one as the war escalates. Just for these measly trade resources, we just want to have our own sea. I mean, admittedly, we're going in for Santanui now, but we'll need, uh, well, we'll see what we get once we take Santanui. But now the dwarves, after signing a peace treaty, but only a few years ago, they're now coming to attack us. What will the Lok Khan make of this in his uh, tent with the rest of his advisors? And what are we to do over here with Mordor acquiring all of these new territories? Join me for that next time. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I'm going with Gandalf. Good day.